And welcome back to News On. We want to welcome back in our bipartisan panel. Joining us once again, Robin Byro, and Melissa Armo. And Melissa, I apologize. We were approaching at a commercial break, and I gave you a very loaded question. So you were talking about uh, your reaction to the vice president stumping there for Governor Gavin Newsom in California. Again, that recall election uh, just days away now. And what I was basically asking you what some people are questioning the focus of this administration. Should she have been there to begin with to stump for Newsom, given all that's going on right now? No, but I think it makes sense because she's from California, and I think they're in desperate straits because he's neck and neck in the polls with Larry Elder right now. So they're trying to pull out all the stops, although I don't think her going there will help Newsom. But she's been trying to distance herself. Uh, from President Biden with all of the Afghanistan controversy. You really haven't seen much of her, really, for the last few months. You make an interesting point there, uh, Robin. We really haven't seen a whole lot of her. I mean, I know she was making that that tour in, in Asia, but she's been pretty quiet. I mean, it was months there. I mean, she was the border czar, and we didn't even see her go to the border. I mean, your thoughts? Melissa, thank you for bringing up the point that she is from California. So I understand why why they sent her yeah. out there. I, I agree with you, though. I don't think necessarily that it's going to help much. I'm not really sure. We don't really track popularity polls for vice presidents. Uh, but I'm not really sure where she stands with the American public right now, uh, specifically because we really haven't seen that much of her. This is a very hotly contested race, though. I frankly am glad that she's going out there. Um, but I need to say this. This is very important. That individual who is wearing the pink gorilla mask needs to be prosecuted and held uh, to, to the highest letter of the law because that was assault. And that's not OK. I don't care what your politics are. That is never OK. Right. Yeah. I think we can all agree on that. I, I love seeing um, civility and dignity. We can bring that back. We do it on the show all the time, right? Come on, look at the exactly. two of you, prime examples. Right. All right, so speaking of popularity, uh, we've been talking a lot about the polls and the president's approval ratings. And uh, now the latest Economist YouGov poll showing just 39% uh, approve of the president's overall job performance. Uh, that is down quite a bit. So I have to ask you, Robin, as someone, I mean, you're a Democrat, uh, you're running for office. Uh, obviously, you know, a lot of people are concerned about the midterms. How challenging is this for you as a candidate? Oh, I'm really glad you asked. This is challenging for me as a candidate because while this has nothing to do with my race, it still matters because it's going to affect voter turnout. Democrats are notorious for not turning out for municipal elections uh, off election years, and this will definitely hurt me. I'm working extra hard to overcome this right now. And how do you do that with people who are independent or moderate? Because I think a lot of people would describe you as more of a moderate right. Democrat, is that fair to say? Yes, yes, it is fair to say. And you, ha what I have to do is give fair criticism, and that's what I try to do. I've criticized very fairly uh, what uh, you know Obama's missteps here with Afghanistan. This was rushed. We've known about this for quite some time. He's been. It's not like he was just inaugurated last month. He's been president for quite a while now. There should have been a better plan. He's been in office. You're, you're talking about Biden. He's been in office for what 50 years. Yeah. I mean, it's not exactly. like he's a new kid on the block. Yeah, this is this is so you give fair, objective criticism. And that's really what all politicians politicians should do. I wish that we would get away from sort of the left or right and just talk about some common sense issues. I don't know why that's so difficult. Melissa, why is that so difficult? I don't know. The, the whole country has become so polarized, even prior to COVID, I'd say the last two years. But really, people that weren't even discussing politics or didn't even take a side, once the government shut down the country, once COVID hit, then everyone was paying attention to politics because you had to to see what was going on. And then, of course, it was an election year. And then, of course, the results of the election were contested by both sides. And then it was a problem, and now we're getting into a situation where what's going to happen going forward with mail-in ballots? I think that the voter rolls need to be cleaned up. I think mail-in ballots are a problem. I think no voter ID is a problem. And I think it's going to be hard for the American people in 2022 and 2024, which really, when you think about it, is less than three and a half years away. It's going to be hard for people to have confidence in upcoming big elections. Uh, and California is one of those, to be honest with you. They're, they're allowing mail-in ballots. How are people going to be confident 
in the outcome of that election with no voter ID and mail-in ballots, you have to bring back some kind of normalcy to people getting along and also to make sure that the vote is true. And bringing power back to the people. Uh, one thing, I, I'm going to keep bringing it up on this show all day long. Whether you like him or don't like him, Ted Cruz has brought it up three times talking about term limits when it comes to some of these politicians in office. Something maybe to consider? Love to have him on the show to talk about that. But in the few minutes that we have remaining, because uh, that is for another day, uh, I'd love to get your thoughts on, again, the president's going to be unveiling this plan. There's talk about vaccine mandates for federal workers. That is a rumor right now. We have not been able to confirm that. The president is going to be delivering that live address, again, on this six-point prong plan when it comes to battling COVID. Robin, what do you anticipate to come out of this that we haven't already heard from the president? With this will be a thing with the, the mandates for federal employees to get vaccinated now that we have final FDA approval of the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, I'm glad that they waited until then. That was the right and responsible decision to make. And look, I've got children in public school. I had to get them vaccinated for mumps and measles and everything else. So uh, if you're going to be serving the public in a job in a, a federal administration, you've got to be vaccinated. I, I got it. Uh, other things, we've got to address the skepticism. You know, there's still so many vaccine skeptics. I have friends that are that take the word of people like Tucker Carlson for gospel. And it, some, of, some of what's being said can be very damaging. And there are concerns that need to be put to rest with science. So you bring up science, uh, Melissa. It does seem like we talked about division in this country, the vax versus the unvaxed. Um, there are some people that would say there should be religious, if not medical, exceptions to some of this, or at least the option to be tested, not to mention there are still people getting COVID, right, even after they've been vaccinated. Uh, we've talked about third uh, booster shots. You've got Israel now doing, doing four booster shot. So some people are saying this is just life as we know it. But going to what Robin had to say, I want to get your reaction, Melissa. I think it's going to be difficult to say anything new because people know that people are still getting COVID after getting vaccinated. So based on that, the people that are skeptical about getting it, whether it's FDA approved or not, it's not going to incent them to take it. And I think the mandates are a problem. People should be able to decide what they want to do with their bodies. And I think it's a problem. They're going to come out with a six-point plan. What will that be? I don't know. But I can tell you right now, he's going to bring up again that we're doing this so that we don't have to shut down again. That's going to be his rationale. That's going to be his reasoning. Somewhere that's going to be in the speech. And that's going to continue just like we saw. It was a couple of weeks ago before the Afghanistan things. I think it was in the end of July he brought it up again. Almost, almost putting the fear bug out there that we might have to shut down again if we don't all get vaccinated. It's going to come out again. We have to do these things because if we don't, we might have to have another shutdown. This is going to continue, continue, continue. And I can't even say, and I said this before, and I'll say it again, there's still a 50-50 chance that they'd shut us down again. And why? Because we don't trust the decisions that the people are making behind the scenes. Who is that? Dr. Fauci, the CDC, and all the people in the background that knew well, well, well before they told anybody what was happening with COVID back in early 2020. And some people are saying now even in 2019 they knew about this. Oh, uh, you just brought up another bet idea, 50-50 chance that we could shut down again. I hate to wage bets on that, uh, but I'm Robin curious to the viewers. He agrees with me. Robin, I bet, Robin will bet me. I mean, go ahead, Robin. I'm you not, tell I'm me. I'm not going to bet you on this. Yeah, I'm not going to bet you on this because I nearly lost $1,000 the last time. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think it's a 50 chance that I we could be shut down again? I don't think that we're headed to a, for a shutdown, uh, but I do expect for President Biden to make the case that if you have a job working for the federal government, serving the people, you have a responsibility yeah. to keep them safe by getting vaccinated yourself. Vaccinated. OK, fair enough. Uh, that was a safe way out. All right. Uh, Rob and <laughs> Melissa, thank you both for joining us. Uh, I'd love to hear what our viewers have to think about these topics. You can always weigh in by finding me at Real Miranda Con. Hashtag share your voice. We'll be right back.